Oh man. Whatever than I thought. tool today. One of the tools that we use a lot of here on the farmstead is carts. We use a lot of carts around here transporting things to the garden, transporting firewood, and even transporting children sometimes. And check this out. And here's one that the kids have been using and you can tell it has gotten beat up quite a bit. But over the years the carts that we've had the most success with has been the gorilla carts here. We actually have two of these, but one of them, well, it's gotten pretty beat up. And right now, it's sitting in our junk slash scrap metal pile. At that pile, I kind of feel like Fred Sam. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming. I'm coming to join you, Elizabeth. So I was thinking, why not try something a little heavier duty? So I was looking at the Vever website, and I was like, let's try this garden cart right here. And one of the things that really impressed me about the company and the website is that they offer a bunch of different items that are great for homesteaders. But will this cart be able to hold up and do the things that we need it to do? Let's put it together and find out. All right, gentlemen, I know you're chomping at the bit to start tearing some stuff up and pulling the plastic off. Go to town. This looks important. All right, Micah, hold this right there. All right, tighten it up. You got it? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Jay, do you know if I can tighten the neck down? Sure, man. You can do it. Yep, put it on there. Yep, come back. Yep. Yep, it's getting tighter. Yep, you're doing it. All right, let me let me get the last little bit. You did great though. I'm gonna go too tight, I won't still be able to turn it. <laughs> Way to go. All right, Josiah, what's the next step? We're putting the wheels on. Fantastic. Like it. All right. All right, so we put the wheel on. Yep. Then you put a washer on. Okay. Put a washer on right here. Okay. Then what comes next? And then you put one of the small pins. You put it in this little hole right here. All right, yep. Go ahead and put it in there. Yep. What does that do? It holds the tire on. Okay. Good job. Good job, Micah. <laughs> you guys the pit crew here? Uh-huh. <laughs> you guys like racing? Yep. You like NASCAR? Yeah. yeah. Who's your favorite driver? AJ Allmendinger. That's right. <laughs> the Dinger. <laughs> All right, now that we got the wheels on, what next? Next, we're putting this on. All right. Yeah. What is that? It's the handle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
This is like a portable bed. <laughs> Pop up, man. We're not laying down on the job. <laughs> And we got it. Way to go and leading us through this project, son. <laughs> Hold on a minute, this doesn't look right. This piece, it goes in, and then if you come over here, and this one, uh, this, these pieces are facing out. Oh yeah, I can see that. This one's on there, more tidy and secure. And then that one, we didn't do right. I got it. Oh yeah, that's lining up much better. We hadn't had many rough nights, but <laughs> last night was one of the one of the rough nights that we've had. I think uh, we just got to sleep until about two o'clock, and Hezekiah and I were up from about two to somewhere around four thirty. Um, so it's nice to get him to go to sleep now. So I can rest some during the day. I've been letting Mike sleep at night because he's got a lot to do during the day and, and I, I appreciate him taking care of us. Yes. He's only been asleep like 20 minutes. get like comfortable and then he'll just move a little bit and then he's up. Looks like he's going back to sleep. Hopefully longer than 20 minutes this time and uh, hopefully we can start getting more sleep at night. <laughs> The metal hose.
Is that a smooth ride? Yes, Lord. All right, hop on out. Right here. All right, guys, let's go ahead and put this garden cart to the test. Let's load it up with some of the logs that we've cut already. It's hard to believe our little Hezekiah is two weeks old now. And for the past week and a half to two weeks, I've been doing what I can to help Lacey out as she's healing and transitioning to having a new little one inside the house. And doing what I can to spend time with him too. Uh, but also as the head of the household and the provider, I gotta get out here and get things done. Because right now, it's important time to get things done. We got plants that are, are starting things that need to be done on the farmstead to be ready for the growing season to make sure my family has the food that we need to have. And it's been really helpful. Our oldest daughter has kind of stepped up. She has stepped up into a bigger role and it's neat to see her flourishing in that. And as I'm out here trying to get things done with the boys, she's been inside helping Lacey out. But she's also, it's been neat to see her as she is also having to bottle feed one of the baby goats and just seeing her step up with that and getting up at 4 a.m. each morning to feed the goat as, as well as feed it throughout the day. It's, I'm so pleased to see her doing that. It's really neat to see. But it is tough not spending as much time in there with them. But it just gives me a little bit more motivation to get out here, work hard, be efficient, be productive, so that way I can get back inside and spend some time with them at least at lunch, and at the end of the day, it makes it even more rewarding. And this time of year is the ideal time to get this done. When it's cooler, there's not as many snakes and poison ivy to deal with. So I wanna get this done before all that stuff starts to come out. I do have to still be worried about the vines from poison ivy because you can still get the rasp from the vines even though there's not leaves on them. But this isn't poison ivy here. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks. Thanks. From boys to men, right? <laughs> hey. Not the group from the 90s, but that's what we're doing here. <laughs> Trying to be men. Working on developing manhood as we're out here working, hopefully, like men. Thinking about manhood, it's pretty sad 
how in today's world there is such a lack of positive examples of real real manhood and what the society our society promotes and what the media promotes just adds to confusion and honestly when I became a husband and father I really didn't know what it meant to be a good husband and a good father to be a real man what manhood was about thankfully through reading the Bible and identifying positive examples that I was able to find and I'm able to find and still learn from today it's helped me to strive to be a better man and to take care of my family to provide for them to love them to teach them to work with them and ultimately all of that is to serve them I am even though I am the head of the household I am their servant and that's hard for some people to accept and to embrace but that's what we're supposed to do we're all to serve one another and with that you get real fulfillment in life you also humbly come to the point where you realize that you need one another all right guys so our primary goal is to get this pile of wood burned up as well as that pile today we're not going to go beyond our carts down there yeah. that's our border we'll do the rest of that another time we start a fire over there good question Micah I actually do plan to do that but the way the piles are right now because the way the trees were just dropped I don't want to do it yet so that way we'd have a fire that would be a little more out of hand I want it to be a little more controllable so we're just gonna gradually take from from those piles and then after that maybe once they're smaller and more manageable then we could burn over there too and start another one but that's a good good question but as we've been going through these areas harvesting the wood to clear it out and to have a healthier pastured combination with some trees we're getting the wood that we need for ourselves as well as kindling and firewood but there's just so much here that we can't get it all harvested for us to use in time that we need it done so we are burning when we need to get burned and also there's benefits to burning as well like this big pine log right here we need to move it out of here before we even try to burn, make a burn pile here because we can use this wood here. Hey, I know Alright. Just cut that up. See, we're closer to burning over here too. You want to give it a shot? Yeah. All right, so you just hook it on here. Pick it up real easy. Don't even have to bend over. Oh, good try. Okay. There you go. Carry it on up there. Yep. Look at the muscles. <laughs> yeah, no, nope, nope. When you do it, just grab this and lift it right off. There you go, man. One of the things that has brought blessings and curses to our society and to manhood has been when the Industrial Revolution took men away from their homesteads, away from their homes, away from their families, 
to spend hours and most of their day working in factories and things like that. And as a result of that, men were not around to be the leaders in their home that they needed to be, nor to teach their sons how to be men. And then you fast forward years later to now, and those effects have just mounted and added. And this is why we're in the state that we're in today with manhood, the family, and our society. Look up there, man, knocking it out. <laughs> That's feel <good>, being man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Let's take a break if you need it. Then we'll get back to it. I should get a break. Well, I'll get a break after I finish this last piece. Yep, that's the right attitude to have. Starting to go now. And of course, the wind's starting to pick up a little bit. So definitely something I'm gonna have to watch out for. Water on, water on. Oh man, we left our water hose down there. Hold it. Make sure there's no pink in the hose. Now, yeah, at this point. Water on it, keep the That's a lot better. Hopefully it stays like this. That wind was just came out of nowhere there for a minute. So, ah, it's just one of those things. I feel like you guys want to roast some marshmallows or <laughs> hot dogs or something. <laughs> uh, we do have a burn permit and we do have a fire station just really, really close. If something does happen, we can just call them. But we did we do have the water here just in case to keep it under control and work with it and uh, hopefully the wind will stay down. Uh, it was uh, interesting there for a minute. All right, just if you can just keep the perimeter wet. We'll just condense the stuff in a pile and keep it under control. If you notice it starts getting too high or we're blowing too much, spray it up. Yes, sir. Thanks, pal. Once we burned down most of the wood, the boys and I took shifts for lunch. But I was a little bummed out that when I went inside, Hezekiah was asleep. And you definitely don't want to wake a sleeping baby. But even though we were working hard today, the boys did get some time to just be boys. Sometimes they just love beating up hey, on hey. something. One man here. One man here, me in the middle. No, 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 me in the middle. And yes, they are real boys. And that means, yes, they also get in trouble at times and need correction. As the day was beginning to wind down, I continued on with cutting up some more logs and continued to put our new garden cart to work.
All right, unhook it. There we go. You're gonna put that side down too. Oh, watch your hands. Let them roll out. You can play. Uh, we want to do one side at a time, right? Whoops. Oh well. Watch the toes. And it always feels good when you put in a good day of hard work and you're able to visually see the progress that you had made. But even though we've made a lot of progress, we still have some more areas that we need to clean up brush in. But that's for another day. Thankfully the brush that we worked on today burned up rather quickly. So I watered down the remaining coals and called it a day early so I could spend some more time with my other son. But first, I'm gonna take a shower. Get all the yucky stuff that we probably had on us from working out in the wooded area. How did you how'd your day go? Hey. 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 This time is so precious. <coughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Whoa, that's a big yawn. What a big yawn. Hey, man. How you doing? It's absolutely vital for moms, working moms, to take maternity leave to make the most of healing and the most of bonding with your baby. But you know what? Fathers, if you can take maternity leave and spend time, especially in that first couple days, that first week with helping your wife to, to heal and spending time with the baby, that's really, really important. And it's best when both parents can be there to be in the home and available to the children and family as much as they can. Yes, that's right. A number of years ago, I left the fitness industry, worked as a personal trainer and nutritional coach, and this was around the time that we were having our daughter, Sayla. And I was noticing when she was a baby, I was having to spend like 12, 14 hours a day away from my family. Then I would come home and just be exhausted and not be able to spend quality time with her. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. This is not what life should be like. So we made the change. And we've been able to, to make sure at first that my wife was able to be a work from home mom, stay at home mom. And then we gradually have been able to develop a home based business here where we can do our work together as well as we homeschool together. So we spend quite a bit of time together. And it's amazing. I love it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And you take away time that we would normally go to sleep when the kids are asleep. So you take away that time out of a 24 hour period. And I was thinking, I spend like 13 to 15 hours a day with our children for the most part. Yeah, we do. We do. And it's so sad to think that on average, most families spend like a third of that time together. That's crazy. And on average studies show that families spend 37 minutes of quality time together a day. That is sad. That is so very sad. Oh man. It is. It's really sad. I so wish that we could get back to a society that is more conducive to family life and spending time together as families. That would solve so much of our global issues, our national issues, if we could have better family life. Now I know that not everyone likes to hear this and it may offend some, but but it's true. If, if we started with working on improving matters in our homes, 
think about how things would be for the better. And it's so wonderful to know that the Bible promises that when Jesus Christ returns, that there will be a family revival. And families will be able to live in a society that is conducive to family life. I'm sorry guys if I got to preaching too much in this video, but these are things that are just near and dear to my heart because they matter. They really do matter. Yeah. Whew. Can you stand again? Show them your strong legs. You got strong legs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Whoa. Getting sleepy again. Sleep like what, 20 hours a day?